Everyone has heard of VHS. From the late 1970s through the early 2000s, it was the dominant home video format. Other formats came and went, but VHS lived on. Beta, Super Beta Hi-Fi, Video 8, and Hi-8, even digital VHS. But none of them were as popular as cheap, reliable VHS. Now that doesn't mean there weren't improvements made to the format. Hi-Fi audio was added in the mid-1980s, but there was a desire for higher video quality, and that's where Super VHS, or SVHS for short, comes in. Stay tuned. As a format, VHS was introduced to the public in 1976. Time shifting was officially now a thing. You could record a television program and watch it later, something we couldn't do before. I remember when our family got our first VHS recorder in the early 1980s. The first thing that we recorded was Wizard of Oz from a network broadcast. It was truly magical to me, not the show, the recording. And yes, I'm aware of the VCR format, Umatic, and Beta, all of which predated VHS, but the low price and licensed, simple mechanism that VHS provided really helped the format take off in the home. It wasn't long before pre-recorded movies came onto the scene and video rental stores graced every single corner. There was a fundamental flaw in VHS that wasn't really a problem when the format started off. Video quality. The standard NTSC analog video signal is 525 scan lines. That's two fields of 262.5 lines, making up one single frame of video. Now they were interlaced, meaning that it scanned the odd lines and then the even lines separately. So your viewable frame was about 486 lines due to the overscan. Now VHS, on the other hand, offers only about 240 lines of resolution, and that's in SP mode. That's about half the broadcast standard. Now this wasn't a problem at first because people were just happy to be able to record their favorite TV shows and then play them back. The average family had maybe a 19 inch TV across the living room, so the apparent degradation of quality wasn't really a big deal. Now as time went on, people started buying larger and larger TVs and some were even hooking up their new stereo VHS machines to their home hi-fi systems and something a little better was needed. Now this is where SVHS comes in. Introduced in 1987 by JVC, Super VHS boasted 420 lines of resolution, enough of an increase that some people couldn't tell the difference between a live broadcast and an SVHS recording. So why didn't it take off? Well, it simply wasn't compatible with standard VHS machines. SVHS records the luminance and chrominance signals separately which is how it's able to increase the quality to such a high degree. A standard VHS machine simply can't play the tape. This meant that everyone who wanted to take advantage of the new format would have to replace their current VHS machines, and most families simply couldn't shell out that kind of money at the time. Now, SVHS did find some popularity with college and university broadcasting programs. The comparatively inexpensive equipment is what many students learned with, including myself. Compared to Umatic or Betacam, it was a bargain. Now, some broadcast outlets and amateur filmmakers even adopted SVHS for its higher quality. In the home space, however, it continued to flounder. Pre-recorded movies were slim pickings, as most studios preferred to release their titles on the more ubiquitous VHS format, rather than cater to a small percentage of people with the new machines. Now, SVHS did eventually find some popularity with home video recording with the introduction of SVHS-C, a compact version of the format used in camcorders. This allowed higher quality home movies. However, an SVHS deck was required to play them back outside of the camcorder itself. So what did SVHS look like compared to VHS? I think the only way to answer that question is to do a little bit of testing on our own. Now, it's tough nowadays to really be able to see the full effect of the comparison. Digital and analog just aren't really compatible. Capturing analog video invariably degrades the quality. 
since analog video is fields and frames, when it's captured digitally, it can cause some jagged edges to appear around objects that really aren't present in the original source. Even so, we're going to give this a try anyway. I'm going to take an output from my studio camera, convert it into high quality NTSC analog video, and then record it here on The Beast, my broadcast SVHS editing deck, and then we'll continue from there. This is standard VHS at approximately 240 lines of resolution. This was the standard for home recording in the 1980s. If I'm honest, I used VHS until the early 2000s, right next to my DVD player and my DVD RAM video recorder. Yes, it's a little soft and the colors are muted somewhat, but this is what we were used to. When you don't regularly experience anything better, you don't know what you're missing. This is SVHS at approximately 480 lines of resolution. The color is a little bit better and the quality of the signal is a little bit clearer. During my time at university, we used Umatic SP as well as SVHS. Now this was in the mid-1990s, and there was a bit of a shift happening during that time when it came to professional video formats. I remember being impressed with the Panasonic SVHS camcorders that we had. They were so small compared to the other formats that were available, and when tape was edited down and a second generation recording was made, the quality was still acceptable. Unlike VHS, where the quality degraded terribly on a second generation. All right, let's go back to 4K. Now that really took me back to my younger days. When I first saw the difference in quality with SVHS, I remember thinking, wow, they're never going to be able to figure out a way to have clearer video than this. And look at us now. It just really makes you stop and think. It's easy to talk down an obsolete format in the present time. We're looking back. There's already something better. So yeah, it looks like rubbish to us now. But at the time, there wasn't anything better. We didn't know there would ever be anything better, so we were looking at the best. So it was amazing. Someday, those of you who are young now will look back on HD and 4K and have the same reaction. Those formats will be the low-resolution, nasty-looking formats, just like VHS and SVHS look to us now. It's crazy how perspective can shift with time. You know, I've really enjoyed this ride down video memory lane. What do you remember about SVHS? Did it even make a blip on your radar at the time? And for the younger folks, do you think you could sit down and watch a movie on VHS or SVHS nowadays? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Your continued support helps keep me motivated to produce more and more content for the channel. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, I'm all ears. If you haven't subscribed or hit that like button yet, please be sure to do that as well. You have no idea how much that helps me out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy listening. Or should I say, happy watching.